Hi folks, welcome to a walkthrough on the correct answers for 2019 higher paper. That's a terrible pen, I think I'll get a better one. That's more like it, 2019 higher chemistry. Just going to explain why the answers are what they are. I know you can get them, um, and I've actually got them. I haven't cheated, so if I do make mistakes today, I'll catch myself at the end. Perhaps even making the mistakes might be useful to you. I'll also talk you through some shortcuts that I use for multiple choice to save you some time. Hydrogen will form a non-polar covalent bond. Non-polar covalent bond means that you need to have the identical electronegativity to hydrogen. Hydrogen's electronegativity, I can't quite remember. <clears throat> 2.2 rings a bell. Uh, yeah, 2.2. It's in the data book, of course. So therefore, that will form a non-polar covalent bond. Even distribution of the electrons. Which of the following is a polar molecule? This uh, may be to do with symmetry. But it's not. It's to do, well, it's to do with symmetry, actually. You're expected to know the shapes of all of these, and all of these are totally symmetrical in three dimensions with one exception, and it's that one. Ammonia is not completely symmetrical in all its dimensions. What is that meant to be, hey? So it's symmetrical that way, but it's not symmetrical that way, and that makes it polar, provided there's a large delta En, which there is. Which of the most following is most likely to act as a reducing agent? A, a reducing agent, well, we need our electronegativity series in the data book again, and if you remember correctly, we had the bra and the boa. Um, so let's have a look at these. MnO4 is way down the bottom left, so it's a boa. So is H2O2, so is Cr2O7, which would sort of leave that by default. That's not even on the electrochemical series, but it is one thing they've sneaked in that they expect you to know it's a reducing agent. Number four, um, where are we for number four? The following reaction takes place when nitric acid is added to zinc. Sorry, amateur error, there we go. The following reaction takes place when nitric acid is added to zinc. So nitrate is turned into nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, sorry, gas, and zinc is turned into zinc two plus. How many moles of zinc are oxidized by one mole of nitrate ions? This is a horrible way of asking what are the stoichiometric numbers here? What are the big numbers that go in front of these? And before you know the big numbers, you are going to have to combine these two equations together. This says three, this says two electrons. I would be tempted to multiply the top one by two. So two, and that gives eight, that gives six. Uh, we'll make two of these, and we'll make four of these. Uh, and this one here, we need to multiply by three. So three zincs makes three zincs and six electrons. Now we can combine them together, only we don't really need to because we've actually got the answer. How many moles of zinc are oxidized by one mole of nitrates? Well, two moles of nitrates uh, oxidizes three moles of zinc, so therefore one will oxidize 1.5. Quite a tricky one for one mark, that one. Which of the following compounds is a tertiary alcohol? Is there a shortcut here? Yeah, we can throw that one out instantly because tertiary alcohols have the OH attached to a carbon which is attached to three other carbons. And that's just bog standard pentanthriol. This one also, the methyl branch is not the same a number as that, so we can chuck that. 2-methylbutantool, mm, suspicious. Uh, let's draw it out. So one, two, three, four. Butantool and there's a 2-methyl. That looks like the answer to, the, to me. We could just check this one. If you want to, uh, we should probably check and see why it's not that one. 2,2-dimethylpropan-1-ol. One, two, three. Oh, we don't need to go any further. Propan-1-ol, and there's two methyls on there and there. Um, sorry, I'm doing that off camera. How amateur. Uh, that is a primary alcohol. So the answer is B. Number six. Molecule X has this structure here. It is an amide or protein. Actually, it's a, bit, a little chunk of a protein. Because there's a protein we could split there and we could split there. Which of the following could be produced by partial hydrolysis of X? So we're not splitting it completely apart. Hmm. That is certainly this part here. And that matches up wonderfully with that. 
tempted to say A. Let's just check. That is indeed this part here. But that is attached to the wrong side. Ah, I see. That is here, but it's attached to the wrong... It would have to be attached to the nitrogen, not to the carbonyl group. I see. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. If I had time at the... Just me personally, I would go with that and then move on. And if I had time at the end, I'd come back and just check that these other two are definitely wrong. Molecule the formula C6, <clears throat> sorry, a C6A12O2 could be, well, there's two oxygens. It's definitely not that one then. It's only got one oxygen. Also, same logic, that one. We're left with these two molecules, which both have two oxygens in them. We're going to have to draw them out. Quickest one first, one, two, three, four, five, six. Double bond O, OH, scratchy pen. Sorry about that. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, 13, 14. And we're only on that. So I'm gonna go with that one. Um, next. Number eight. Compound X reacted with hot copper oxide and the resulting product did not give a color change when heated with a felling solution. Fellings is used along with tollens to tell the difference between aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes can be oxidized, again, ketones cannot. So we're dealing with a ketone after we have oxidized it. So starting compound here makes a ketone when you oxidize it, which means this has to be a secondary alcohol. Can't be a primary one. So, nope. Possibly. Nope. Nope. It's that one. Structure of never heard of it. This is shown below. Which of the following is the correct systematic name of never heard of it? Pentanoic acid. No, 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 because we've got one, two, three in a chain there. So that's basically your skeleton. So it's like propanoic acid with two methyl branches on it on the second one. So I'm going to go with two, two dimethyl propanoic acid. More organic. I don't even think I can fit this on the screen in one shot. This table shows four compounds that contribute to the aroma of spices. Which one is not derived from a terpene? Terpenes are all based on C58H8. My apologies. So basically, we're looking for a molecule which is not a multiple of this. 10, 10, 10, and 9. I'm going to go with D. 11, which is classified as reduction. Methanol to methanoic acid, that's oxidation. Propanol, that's oxidation as well. Butanone back to an alcohol, that looks like reduction to me, and that is also oxidation. It's C. These are just, you need to go and learn your organic, I'm afraid. There's no magic to these. It's just know your stuff is the key to them. Number 12, secondary amine has two carbon atoms directly bonded to the nitrogen atom. So to get directly bonded to the nitrogen atom. Problem solving. We've never heard of secondary amines at this level yet, but it tells you in the question and definition. Just follow that definition. So here's the nitrogen atom. It's only got one carbon directly bonded to it. It's not that. Here's the nitrogen atom. It's got two carbons. Yep, that looks like it could be. But since it's a problem solving, we'll just check this one out. This nitrogen atom has got one, two, three carbons attached to it. And can we see on screen? Yes, we can. This nitrogen atom has got one carbon attached to it. We want to. So, yep, it's B. The number of moles of ions in one mole of copper 2-phosphate. We need the formula first of all. This is hands and fingers times. Uh, so, copper 2-phosphate uh, uh, is not a group we use very much. Um, I'm pretending I don't know it, so I have to go and look up in my data book. It's PO4, its valency is the same as its charge, which is 3, and this is a valency of 2. Let's swap these valencies around. You end up with that. It just says ions in general. So for every one copper phosphate, you find you've got three coppers and two phosphates, so there are five ions in total. I've seen variants where they specify just coppers or just phosphates, but that's not doing it. In this case, it's just ions in general, so it's all the ions. How much would you like? All the ions. Number 14. 
Which of the following gas samples has the same volume as four grams of methane? Yeah, classic SQA. What they actually mean is you're matching up one of these answers with the number of moles of methane gas. Methane is 12 plus 4 is 16. You've got four moles of it, sorry, four grams of it. So its mass over GFM is quarter of a mole. 0 0.25 of a mole. One of these will also be 0 0.25 of a mole. All we need to do is find it. One gram of helium. Uh, that is one over four. That certainly looks like 0.25. That looks like our preliminary answer. One gram of hydrogen. That's 0 0.5 because it's diatomic, remember? So it's one over two. Three, uh, I'm not going to go any further. It's A. Again, in my exam, I'd come back and check the rest. Magnesium carbonate reacts with nitric acid. This is going to be a lot of work, I think, for one mark. I can just smell it in this question here. 0 0.05 moles of magnesium carbonate was added to a solution containing 0 0.06 moles of nitric acid. Right, so the ratio here is 1 to 2. To 1 to 1 to 1, actually. If you have got 0 0.05 moles of magnesium carbonate, which we have... In order to burn all of that away, you need to have 0 0.1 moles of the nitric acid. We don't. So all of this is not going to react. This is the excess. All of this, on the other hand, is going to get entirely burned up. So I'm actually tempted to pop 0 0.06 here, which means we will use 0 0.03 of this, and we will make 0 0.03 of this, and 0.03 of this, and 0.03 of this. Don't know if I've just made work for myself there. Let's have a look. Zero point, oh good, no, I haven't made work because that's not true. 0 0.06 moles of magnesium, nope, that's not true either. Magnesium carbide is excess by 0 0.02. That looks like, yep, and nitro, no. Okay. Number 16. This is not going to fit on the page. Sorry about this. We'll get it in a sec, folks. In which of the following diagrams does the dotted line represent a permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction between propanones? So you're looking for something that acts between a delta plus and a delta minus. Well, if it's between the same two atoms, I don't think so. Definitely not. So that's out. This is between different atoms, but... The delta in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is not enough to cause a dipole-dipole interaction. This one here, we've also got the same two atoms, so that is out from the same logic as A, which leaves us with D, and now we can see this is delta plus and that is delta minus. So you're going to get your dipole-dipole interaction. That's the answer there. Number 17. Uh, this is the point where I wish I wasn't using my phone as a camera because I need a calculator for this. I'm just going to go and pester the wonderful technicians that we have here in Melbourne Academy. The presence of one of them in the room is no way affecting how much praise I'm going to give them, of course. Okay, atom economy is... Atom economy is... I've left my pen somewhere. Okay, atom economy is defined as the total mass of desired products over the total mass of reactants. So... They want the iron, so this is what we're interested in. There are four of them, that's worth noting. They've given the GFMs there, that's nice. So we'll need four lots of 55.8 divided by the total mass of reactants, which is two lots of this. Again, they've given the GFM. S save me some work. That's not like the SQA. Somebody must have been feeling unwell the day they wrote this question. They must have realised that uh, in order to do the GFMs, we're doing a horrendous amount of work. And three lots of carbon. So let's just punch that in. Uh, two seconds. Uh, one, five, nine. You don't, need, you don't need to hear me work this out. Okay, it comes to be 62.8, which is B. Number 18, 100 centimetres cubed of propane is mixed with 600 centimetres cubed of oxygen and the mixture is ignited. At the end of the reaction, the total volume of gas would be... Now, whenever they want total volume of gas, you have to ask yourself, is it just this and this? They haven't specified a temperature here, but they have specified that it's liquid water. So we can ignore the volume of liquid water. It is negligible. Uh, the ratio here is 1 to 5 to 3. So if we burn... Can we burn all of the propane? 
Yes, we can, because we've got too much oxygen, which is good. So we can burn 100 of this, which will react with 500 of this. That will all go, and you'll make 300 of this. Tempted to say 300, but of course we had 600, and we've only burned 500, so there's 100 excess of this, so the total final volume, 400. Two-step reaction, shown below. Hmm, this is new. Two-step reaction, shown below. Step one was a yield of 60%. Step two, a yield of 90%. This isn't a chemistry question, SQA. This is a maths question. So if we start with a random number, let's assume we start with 100 grams. At the end of um, step one, we'll have 60 grams of reactant, of product, sorry. And then this is 90%, so all we need is 90% of 60, which is 54 grams. That's how much I've got left. What a stupid question. In chemistry terms, Emma. Number 20. The volume of hydrogen gas given off against time with excess of zinc lumps. So that means the hydrogen gas... No, 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 no. The acid. That's your limiting chemical. So that determines when the reaction stops because the, ex the zinc is excess. So in other words, this height here, this volume of hydrogen is controlled by the number of moles of acid. Which of the following graphs would show the volume of hydrogen gas given off when an excess zinc powder was added? Oh, okay, so we had lumps here before. Now we're on powder. And also, we had 100 mils of 1 mole per litre. Now we've only got 50 mils of 1 mole per litre. Two different variables being changed at once. That's quite wicked. This one here means that you'll only go half as high up, and this variable here means you get the gas produced much faster. So I'm looking for a graph in my head that goes like this. Have a look and see. It's not that one, too high. It's the right height, but it's the same slope. There we go, let's see. 21. Consider the path, re the reaction pathway shown below. I'll consider that for the next 10 minutes, shall I? According to Hess's law, now, B, they're all starting with B, so we're effectively, we're going from W to Z. That's the route. Uh, and we're going with the alternative route, which is around this way. So we're going along here, we're going against this one, and we're going against this one. So we're going to take A, fine, leave it as it is. This will have to be negative C, this will have to be negative D, because the original arrows for D and C are going the opposite way to what we want to go, whereas this arrow here was going with us. Stop waffling, hey. Um, a minus C minus D? That's just A. There we go. Too many A's there. 22. Which of the following is not a factor? RTFQ. Read the flipping question. Not a factor that affects the rate of reaction. By the way, just as a little exam question aside here, it's so easy to miss that, which is one of the reasons why... I sometimes like to check the other answers are wrong. Because if I have missed this, I will get three correct answers and one wrong one. That probably makes me go back to think that I've missed something. Anyway, stop waffling. Not a factor that affects the rate of reaction. So we're looking for factors that affect the rate. Activation energy, that will affect the rate. So it's not an answer. Kinetic energies of reactant molecules, in other words, the temperature. That will affect it. Concentration, that will also affect it. Enthalpy change does not actually affect the rate of a reaction. This does, because that's how difficult it is to get started. This one simply controls how big the energy delta is from reactants to products. And that doesn't actually affect the speed of the reaction. 23. In which of the following reactions would the yield of product be increased by lowering the pressure? Ah, now lowering the pressure. We want to shift the equilibrium to the right. So for this one, we would require more moles of gas to be on the right. And less moles of gas to be on the left. So if we have a look at this, we've got two moles on the left, two moles on the right. Changing the pressure will have no effect on that. Uh, four moles on the left, two moles on the right. That sounds like that might be the right answer. Hmm. 
one mole, two moles. Oh yeah, that's that's the wrong answer, of course, yeah. We want more moles on the left. Sorry, tripping myself up here. Um, and, th oh, hold on. I must have done something wrong here. Either I'm doing something wrong or I'm misreading the question. Let's reset this here. And which of the following, that, that's, by the way, this is nice. I could just cheat and pause, but I'm not going to because I must have done something wrong here. And which of the following reactions would the yield of product be increased by lowering the pressure? Let me check my logic first of all. If you have the same number of moles on both sides of an equilibrium, then changing the pressure makes no difference. If you have more moles on this side, if you increase the pressure, the reaction will go to the side with the least moles. So if you increase the pressure here, ah, I've got my logic wrong. That's okay. That's why we check these things. Whereas if you have this situation here, yeah, it's this one here. Because if I remember it personally, I remember it by if you increase the pressure, the reaction goes to the side with the least number of moles. And we're decreasing the pressure, so the reaction will go to the side with the most number of moles, which in this case has to be on the right-hand side. Okay, let's go back and check your own logic again. Hey, So two moles, two moles, that one's out. Four moles on the left, two moles on the right. Uh, one mole on the left, two moles on the right. So that's out. Three moles on the left. One mole on the right. Whoops. Yeah, it helps when you read read your own solution. You sell the old fool. You want mo less moles on the left. I'm stuck in the same logic from before. It's a nice demonstration of how you can tie yourself in knots. Of course, the only one that has the least moles on the left is that one there. There's less moles on the left and more moles on the right. That's your own argument. You daft old fool, right enough. Fortunately, it's nearly the end of the paper. Let's have a look. What we got? 24. Uh, the graph shows the distribution of kinetic energies for a reaction involving two gases. Okay. Which graph would show the effect of increasing the temperature? Right. If you increase the temperature, you will shift the apex here at the moment, represents this point on kinetic energy, which corresponds to a certain temperature. If you're going to increase the temperature, then your apex will need to shift to the right of where we currently have it. And if we have a look down here, it's tricky to get this all in one shot, I'm afraid, folks. Uh, nearly. We want an apex drifted to the right. Here's where it was before. And I'm pretty sure you can see the only one that's driven the apex to the right is A. And then we're on 25. Alkenes react with ozone. Never heard of it. Problem solving organic. To form these things, ozonides, which can be decomposed to give carbonyl compounds. So something's going on here. And what have we done effectively? We've effectively karate chopped that molecule there, split it into two, and then popped an oxygen where the double bond used to be. Which of the following alkenes would produce a mixture of ethanol and propanone. Right, I think it would be easiest to draw the ethanol then. So ethanol would have a carbon, and we'll draw it in the same format as they've done, just to keep track of what's going on. That would be ethanol. And propanone would be on my own camera, yes I am. That would be propanone. So now we can just reverse that process. Let's just join that up with a honking big double bond. That looks like a triple bond. Sorry about that. Very sloppy of me. And what does this match up to? CH3, CH, double bond, CH, C... No, it's not that one because we need to have effectively a branch here, so it's not that one. CH3, CH, not, not enough carbons. CH3, mm, eh, nope, not that one, better be the last one, or I've done something wrong. CH3, CH, C, CH3, CH3, 
Yep, that's the one. Uh, I'm now going to go and check the answers, folks. Uh, if I have uh, messed any up, then I will... I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to say bye-bye for the moment. Thank you for listening. Hope this was of some use. If there's any more of this video, you realise that I have screwed up one of the answers. Okie dokie. Mistake number one. Compound with a molecular formula could be I must have counted my hydrogens wrongly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons. Let's not jump to any conclusions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ha! <laughs> I can't count. Simple answer to that. One idiot. Let's see if there's any more. <laughs>